Hello and welcome, this is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'll be sharing how I made 53 cards using the Cardabella Happy Christmas Collection. It was part of the Club Echo Park kit that was released in 2021. I started making my Christmas cards back in July and I've been working on them a little bit at a time ever since. I used my quarterly card challenge number seven and challenge number eight, plus the November 2022 bonus printable to create these cards. I'll start by showing you the six by six paper pad and the patterns that I selected for the six sheets that I used with challenge number seven. Now, even though challenge seven ended in September, you can still download the printable as a patron, which is a membership program. And I'll share about that a little bit more later. But if you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you use the cutting guides and the card sketches that I provide in the free PDF printable to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper, plus other cardstock and decorations. These are the patterns that I selected for each of the papers A through F using the printable for challenge seven. I will place a link to my YouTube video where I explain challenge seven in more detail in the description box. But just to give you a little bit of an explanation as to how I select my patterns, I look at the color-coded card sketches to see which patterns will be used together on the cards. So before I cut the papers, I wanna make sure that they will go together. And the great thing about using double-sided paper is that if one side doesn't work, the other side might match. So here I'm just looking at the pattern so I can decide which ones to assign to papers A through F. Now the cutting guides have numbers on each piece that corresponds to the different card sketches. And there's also arrows on each piece showing how it will be facing on the card sketch as it's designed. And there are scissors indicating which cut you'll wanna make first. You can turn the sketches to be a different orientation if you need to. But after cutting all of the papers, you'll want to sort the pieces into different piles by the different card sketch numbers and i like to use cellophane bags but of course you can use envelopes or you know whatever just to keep it organized but um here i'm just showing you kind of how these patterns are i do try to use the solid colors mixed with some of these other bolder patterns but i'm just making sure that they all pair well together so I cut all of the six by six papers off camera and I have sorted all of the pieces into the cellophane bags. But if you look at the card sketches, you'll see that there are measurements on each one. So if you don't wanna make all 17 cards, you can just use whatever sketches you like the best. Now these, are, this is the coordinating solids paper pack. So I'll be using this, sorry, I bumped the, bumped the camera there, but I'll be using this with um, challenge number seven, these cards. I'll be cutting these down for my layers. So any card sketches that call for layers, you'll see that there's a few on here that, like the gray pieces in the background, I'll use some of those and I'll also cut some of the darker pieces to mat the uh, pattern papers. But that's what I did next. And then this is the set of 12 by 12 papers that came in the kit. This first sheet here has a bunch of tags that I didn't really end up using for these cards, but I'll definitely cut those up and use them for my Christmas gifts. But these cut aparts here are wonderful. I end up using the four inch by four inch cut aparts for some of the cards with my bonus printable. And then these are the three by four cut aparts and I'll show you how I use these up with my with the cards at the end for with my bonus printable. But these are just some of the patterns here. They're just the same that's in that smaller six by six paper pad. Um, but I do end up cutting some of these out and I use those for embellishments. But the 12 by 12 papers are generally the same that's in the paper pack. They're just a, a larger size. So I like to use the more solid, solid colored ones for layering up my cards with um, the smaller pattern papers in the 6x6 pad. So I went ahead and did all of that off camera, cut up all of my layers and I figured out my embellishments and so now I will show you the cards. I will put the card sketch up in the top right hand corner. For most of these cards I used some of the frames and tags 
and also the chipboard accents from this Happy Christmas collection. Any additional products that I use to create these cards, I will list them under the supplies section in the description box. But you can see here I've got some loves from Lizzie peel off stickers to give it some shine between those pattern paper pieces. But I will also list them on the screen above too. So while I show you these cards, I'll explain how to enter the challenge so you can have a chance to win some awesome prizes from some amazing craft companies. All you have to do is download the latest quarterly card challenge and as of the date of this video that would be challenge number eight. You'll download that from my website and then you'll create all of your cards, take a picture of all of them together, and then upload them to the official entry photo album in my Facebook group, which is called Kendra's Card Challenges. And I will have a link to this group down below as well, so you can join if you're not already a member. But there are also photo albums for each card sketch, where you can post photos of the individual cards that you make. And by doing this, you'll be eligible to win monthly prizes as well throughout the quarter. It's really a lot of fun, and the best part is you'll have a great set of coordinating A2 size cards when you're done. Now, if you're into scrapbooking, we also have a scrapbook edition of the challenge where you can create scrapbook layouts and post pictures of those to have a chance to win. Steph with Chaos in the Craft Room creates the scrapbook editions each quarter, and she basically converts it to 12 by 12 paper, and she does a fantastic job. So if you want to knock out some scrapbook pages, download the scrapbook version from my website also. And remember, a new challenge begins at the start of each quarter. So if you start at the beginning of the quarter, you have three months to work on your entries and get them posted. If you're not on Facebook, you can also upload your photo using the link on my website. So here are all 15 cards that I made using challenge number seven. So now I'll show you the papers that I selected using the cutting templates and sketches from card challenge number eight which runs from October 1st through December 31st of 2022. Now this printable can be downloaded for free on my website at Cards by Kendra right now as of the date of this video. The process is the same as I mentioned before for challenge seven, basically assigning each of the patterns to papers A through F and looking at each of the card sketches to see which ones go together best. But I will link the introduction video for challenge eight in the description box as well and it explains how the challenge works how to cut the papers and how to enter the contest to be eligible to win some awesome prizes but for this set rather than using colored card stock i used some of those 12 by 12 pattern papers that i showed you earlier that were from the kit i used those for matting the pieces for the card sketches that called for layers and like before i i did all of the prep off camera but here I'm just basically showing you what I use for each of these, um, these cutting templates for the six sheets. So again, I will have an image of each of the card sketches up in the top right hand corner so you can compare it with the finished card. For most of my card bases, I used 110 pound heavyweight wood grain pattern paper from the Paper Studio there it's wood on one side and it's white on the other and then for the embellishments i used more of the frames and tags some of those cut aparts some chipboard accents stickers adhesive brads and enamel dots so I, I did a little bit more with this set of cards but it's from that same happy christmas collection so as you can see i used different shapes for some of the focal points on these cards rather than what the sketch calls for. Remember, you can change it up to make it work with the supplies that you have. I needed a bunch of Christmas cards and I didn't want to have to do any stamping. This kit came with tons of stuff and so I'm just using what came in the kit. Um, even though I'm sharing 53 cards with you today, I still have lots of paper left and more cutter parts and stickers left over. So I can definitely make a lot more but I didn't want this video to extend out past Christmas, so I figured I'd go ahead and share that with you. So back to talking about the cards. Now we're at the split front card sketches, numbers nine and 10. On other cards I've made with this challenge, I've added foam to the back of the pattern paper pieces to give it some dimension. But on these cards, I just glued them directly onto the card base. And then on the second one, I changed the orientation. 
I mail a lot of my cards, so I didn't want to add too much dimension so that it wouldn't cost extra. Um, but there are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are two Starburst card sketches, number 13 and 14. And after making several different sets, I discovered that the best way to get the angles to line up exactly is to cut them, cut the angles for both papers E and F at the same time. If you do them separately and you're off by just a hair, it can make it a little tricky to line these up on the card base. But I do love the, the green and the red together. And then for card 16, I turned this card to be portrait rather than landscape. And I added a scrap strip of the trees for that middle piece. And I used the Happy Christmas sentiment cut from the bottom of those 12 by 12 papers. I figured I'd make use of everything. And then of course I turned card 17 to be portrait also. And this is the last card from challenge eight. Now for the next set of 21 cards, I used the November 2022 bonus printable that's available for download over on my Patreon page if you sign up as an All Access patron. You'll have access to my bonus printables each month and the November printable is a 12 by 12 one sheet wonder with a couple of fun fold tutorials that are great for using the cutter parts as I mentioned before. This printable shows how to make a double Z fold card, which is what I'm showing you now. This is where you can utilize those three by four cut aparts. I guess these are also called journal cards, but I'll go ahead and show you all of the double Z fold cards first. But this fun fold allows the recipients to be able to place it upright on their table for display, kind of like an easel card. And you can write your message either on the small inside rectangle piece or on the back. And I made five of this style, but I still have a ton of cut aparts where I can make more. These next few cards are book binding fold cards. These are great for using up those four inch by four inch cut aparts. You just take the one inch strip of pattern paper and you place it on the far left. And on your card base, you'll score it at one and a quarter inches from the crease of the card. And then you'll glue that piece down to the back side of the card base. So your opening on the inside will be four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. You can add ribbon or twine on the bookend piece or you can just decorate it with stickers or other embellishments and I made nine of these types of cards. So the printable also has another sketch on it to use as an alternate if you don't have any four inch by four inch cut aparts. And this is basically just having those five one inch strips across the front of the card base and just space them out just a little bit. Then there's an additional card sketch included in the printable, and it's just a regular A2 size card like the card you see here. And then next I made a few easel cards using more of those three by four inch cut aparts. The instructions for this style of fun fold card are on the May of 2022 bonus printable that's available for download for all access and VIP patrons. But basically it just has some type of card stock or embellishment on the inside to be able to prop up the bottom half of the front of the card so that it will sit up like an easel. And I'll just go ahead and show you all of these easel cards that I made. And then the last card is a variation of the double Z fold card, except the front piece is not connected to the inner part. 
I just glued a little rectangle that's hidden behind that cut apart across the front so I'll have a place to wrap my sentiment. So using collection kits or subscription kits with my card challenges is a great way to make lots of cards with minimal supplies. As I mentioned before, I will have a list of the products that I use to make the cards in the description box, along with some links in case you're interested. Some of these are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I get a small percentage of the sale at no extra cost to you. And this helps to support my channel and helps to keep my challenges free each quarter. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can win prizes for entering the challenge. And here is a list of all of these prizes for challenge number eight. And you can also find these on my website. But the challenge is open to card makers worldwide. You have until December 31st of 2022 to create your cards and post them in the Facebook group. Plus, if you have a YouTube channel and you post a video of your creations using my hashtags, Kendra's Card Challenge 8 or KCC8, you'll get an extra entry into the contest. And you don't have to use any particular company's products to enter this challenge. You can use what you have in your stash. I also wanted to mention some of the other perks of becoming a patron for Kendra's Card Challenges. The first tier of membership starts at just $5 a month, but all patrons receive a handmade card made by me each month, plus access to previous card challenge printables and a printer-friendly version of the current challenge PDF file, plus a shout out on my videos. All access patrons receive everything that I just mentioned, plus early access to my card challenges. You'll receive those uh, downloads available a couple of weeks early, plus those bonus monthly printables. And this tier is $10 a month. And then the VIP patron membership level includes everything I just mentioned, plus a card making kit and a quarterly crafty Zoom session with me. For more information on how to become a member, please visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges, and I'll have this link down below in the description box. I want to thank my patrons for their support. I really couldn't do this without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.